welcome to my channel. My name is Emmanuel Cyprian and in this video we shall be looking at categorization. Categorization is the second step in the risk management framework. In our previous videos, we have looked at the seven steps of risk management framework according to NIST 837 Revision 2. We have also talked about the step one of the risk management framework, which is preparation. So please, I will advise you to check out the videos in my channel. But for today, this video is centering on second step, that is the step two of the risk management framework, which is categorize. Now to begin with, what is categorization? Categorization also means to separate. Categorization also means to sort. Categorization also means to classify. Now, categorization is essential. It's one of the essential steps in the risk management framework so that we are able to determine how to adequately protect the information and information system. Without us categorizing the system and the information that resides in the system, we will not be able to adequately protect that system. If you don't know something, if you don't know the importance of something, abuse is inevitable. So that is why categorization is very essential in the risk management framework step. The overall goal of the risk management framework step is to ensure that every information system and the information that resides in the system are adequately protected. Okay, why do we categorize? We categorize in order to determine how important, how uh, critical, how sensitive are the information that resides in the system. So categorization helps us to determine the importance of the system. Categorization helps us to determine the criticality of the system. Categorization helps us to determine the sensitivity of the system. So that is why it is an important step in the risk management framework. How do we categorize? That I will explain as we go further in this video. Or what is the purpose of this categorization step? The purpose of this categorization step is to understand how to categorize information and determine an information system high watermark. The purpose is to understand how to categorize an information and determine an information system high watermark. What is high watermark? I will explain it as we go along in this video. So, what are the NIST publications for categorization? We have two important NIST publications for categorization. One is the SP860. SP860 has two volumes, volume 1 and volume 2, and they are both in revision 1. SP860 is the guidance for categorization, meaning that it guides for mapping types of information and information system to security categories, describes the process and steps for categorizing information types and information system. So SP860 is an important NIST publication for categorization. Another NIST publication for categorization is FIPS 199. FIPS 199 is the standard for categorization. FIPS means Federal Information Processing Standard. FIPS 199, which is the standard for security categorization of federal information and information system, constitutes the definition for categorization of information types and information system. In this FIPS 199, there are two main important information you need to, you know, lay emphasis on. One of them is the security objectives, which is the CIA, confidentiality, integrity, and availability. What is confidentiality? 
It means protecting information from unauthorized access. Who is not supposed to see, know, or access that information should not access it. That is the protection of confidentiality. Integrity means protecting the information from unauthorized destruction or modification. Availability means making sure the information is available 24-7. Another vital information in FIPS 199 is potential impact. Potential impact means the severity of damage, the magnitude of harm that can be resulted when there is a cyber breach. So these are two major important information that you will find in FIPS 199, which we need for categorizing information and information system. Now for SP 860, you will find in this next publication all kind of information types that, are, that could be residents in a system and NIS has been magnanimous enough to categorize those information types in NIST 860 Volume 2. So you can check it out for more details. Now let's look at the task under categorization. There are three tasks under categorization. Task number one is system description, meaning that the system should be described Tell us what the system does. Tell us the definition of the system. Give us the characteristics of the system. Give us the component of the system. Give us the information types that resides, that is processed, that is shared, that is documented in the system. So that is what the first task is talking about, system description. Task number two is security categorization which means go ahead and categorize the system. How will you or how do you categorize? I will explain it in the next slide. And then task number three is security categorization review and approval, meaning that once you are done categorizing, there is the need to review and approve that categorization you have just done. So these are the three tasks under categorization and then categorization steps. How do you categorize? One, you identify information types. Information types means the information that is being processed, stored, transmitted, or shared in that system. Information type is what makes the system important. Information type is what makes the system usable. Information type is what makes the system critical to us. An information type could mean, for example, social security number, date of birth, medical information, insurance information, house address, um, accounts information, uh, bank statement. These are examples of information types. So we need to know what are the types of information that will be stored, processed, or transmitted in that system. So that is the first step in categorization. Number two, step number two in categorization is selecting potential impact levels, meaning that you select the potential impact levels, which could be high, moderate, or low. So you assign it to the security objective. And then step number three is you review, you adjust, and document the potential impact levels that you have recommended. Step number four is determine your high water mark. What is high water mark? It means the highest impact value. You have to determine it. And then the last step is determine the overall security category for the system. Whether the system is a high system, it's a moderate impact system, or a low impact system. So these are the steps in categorization. This is just to give you the updated task under categorization. If you need detailed information teaching about this categorization step, I have a video about it. I have a video on categorization, detailed on categorization. Please check it out 
in my channel. You will see that video. It is called NIST uh, Risk Management Framework Categorization Step. This video is to give you the updated task as per NIST 837 Revision 2. If this video has been helpful even to you, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel, like my video, and turn on your notification button. Thank you.